Greetings to everyone joining us around the world, and welcome to the September 2017 Computer Society Learning Series webinar. My name is Carrie Cosby, and I'm the Chapters Manager here at the IEEE Computer Society. If you're joining us for the first time today, our membership department organizes these monthly webinars to help engage members with their member resources and benefits. We've been doing these for the past year and a half, and encourage you to view all the previous webinars on computer.org. Today's topic is on applying for scholarships, tips and guidelines. Peter Major will present our student scholarships and awards, specifically the Richard E. Merwin Student Scholarship, the Upsilon Pi Epsilon Honor Society Award, and the Lance Stafford Larson Student Writing Award. He will provide insights into how to apply and what opportunities are afforded to winners. Before I introduce Peter, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. The webinar is being recorded and will be emailed to all attendees in a couple of days with the, with the slides. There will be a Q&A at the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat box. If we don't answer all of the questions, there's a log of the questions submitted with your email, and we will reach out to you with an answer. Peter Major is Vice Chair of the IEEE Computer Society Membership and Ac Geographic Activities Board and Chair of the Awards and Recognition Committee. He was Chair of the IEEE Computer Society's Boston Chapter for six years, from 2006 to 2012, and still runs its evening seminar series. He has served as regional representative on various membership and geographic activities board committees. In the past, in the distant past, Peter was secretary treasurer of the ACM Special Interest Group on Programming Languages, SIGPLAN, and co-chair of two of its conferences, POPL and PPL, a predecessor of PPOP. He has worked as an employee or consultant for computer manufacturers, language and environment developers, and performance modeling and research consultants. He has also taught at the Metropolitan College of Boston University and at Northeastern University. Currently, he writes computer software and explores applications of computer science techniques to computational and synthetic biology. And with that, Peter, the floor is yours. Hi, everybody. I'd like to welcome you here on behalf of the IEEE Computer Society's Membership and Geographic Activities Board and its Awards and Recognitions Committee, ARC, manages the student awards and scholarships for the IEEE Computer Society. Basically, you have three, three types of student awards or scholarships. Richard Merwin Student Scholarships, which recognizes uh, activities that students participate in in the computer society, and especially leadership roles that they have in the computer society and the IEEE and weights that heavily, uh, as well as academic excellence and other activities, uh, of which there are 36 awards. Uh, Upsilon Pi Epsilon Honor Society Award, which uh, puts highest emphasis on academic achievement, which can uh, include uh, publishing papers and receiving other awards, as well as participating in uh, various kinds of student activities. There's also the Lance Stafford Larson Award. <coughs> uh, Richard Merwood Award is mostly geared to students who are really active in computer society or IEEE activities. Epsilon Pi Epsilon Award uh, takes into account all computer-related activities, not just those for society, IEEE, and the, large, uh, the best paper award uh, is just basically for a best paper, not really taking into account grades and other things. Uh, the uh, Whirlwind and, uh, and Epsilon Pi Epsilon Awards are mostly for juniors, seniors, and graduate students because they require about three years of transcripts and have that kind of a requirement. Whereas the Larson Best Paper Award 
as long as they've uh, written the paper. Uh, the Richard E. Verwood Award was established in honor of uh, Richard E. Ver Verwood, a past president of the IEEE Computer Society, he was also a pioneer in the uh, development of digital. After gra he graduated from the Moore School of Electrical Engineering of the University of Pennsylvania in 1943, joined the team developing the EAC computer, uh, really one of the first digital computers in the world, and then organized the engineering effort for the MANIAC computer, which was implemented at Los Alamos. After World War II, he uh, was working for IBM in 1951 to 1965, helped develop a number of commercial digital computers, including the 702 and the 705, manager for the stretch computer program to uh, push the computer technology of the 1950s as far as it could take it. And the stretch computer project was notable by actually anticipating development of technology beyond what was readily available and to match that, try to meet that up with the current design. After lead, uh, he spent the last few years of, uh, at, at IBM doctorate in uh, computer science, and then he later worked as a, in various senior government positions and taught at George Washington University. Prior to becoming uh, president of the Computer Society, Berwin was the editor of the IEEE Transactions on Computers, chair of several computer conferences of various other IEEE uh, positions. He was also active in the SIG Micro Group of which he was chair from 1971 to 1973. Have, uh, the Berwood Scholarships are our largest awards. We have a total of about 36 per year. Uh, spring, we had 52 applicants, and uh, there were 18 scholarships awarded. Uh, uh, Edward Addy was the uh, chair of that committee. We had 12 reviewers. Paul Joseph Allen was a uh, prior Merwin Award winner of a review committee. We have about 10 reviewers, already gotten about 60 applica applications and are expecting to award a, about 18 scholarships. The deadline, if you're still planning to uh, submit an application. Uh, Interrupt you just for a second. Um, we are getting a lot of people who are unable to hear you. Um, maybe you could speak a little bit louder or closer to the uh, the microphone. Okay, let me try to do that. Okay, there are several different criteria for the uh, Merwin Scholarship. About 30 percent of the grading is based on your IEEE activities. Uh, taking into account what you've done as opposed to just listing your position on your resume. About 10% goes to other activities, which could be just about anything, including sports, church groups, charity groups, et cetera, uh, showing the breadth of your involvement and your interaction with other people. 30% goes to uh, grades, academic achievement, and uh, can be bumped up by including publications, and various other awards that you've won. And 20% goes to a uh, letter of recommendation, which has to be from your uh, chapter or student branch advisor. Uh, and 10% it comes from a vision statement of what you intend to do as a student ambassador. There's more information about this at www.computer.org web students Merwin. Uh, it's important when you put together your Merwin application to be concise, uh, including excessive material doesn't help. We are essentially are limiting it to 10, to 10 pages because we want to avoid getting excessive extraneous information. The 10 pages don't include transcripts. Uh, direct, uh, 
you can have up to two recommendations, so the second recommendation isn't really required, but one of the recommendations definitely has to come from a chapter or student branch advisor. The recommendation should, should really show that the recommender knows you and can, should really talk to a little bit to your, to, to your technical expertise as well as to some of the things that you've done. It should not just be a regurgitation of your resume. Uh, the Merwood Award gets recognized, you can see here, Mega, one of our current award winners, Mega Ben, receiving the award from Andrew Obelier, my predecessor as awards committee chair, and John Luc Audio, who's the uh, current uh, president of the Computer Society. You get a monetary award, and you become a student ambassador, and one of the big things about the award that makes it different from other awards is you also get some mentoring and guidance about things that you can do to make your award more meaningful. And we have a student ambassador mentoring committee that's chaired by Prasad Mohan at Shadow N that coordinates that and a lot of the, uh, the the committee consists of a lot of former ambassadors and other IEEE volunteers who will mentor you during your one year as a student ambassador. Some of the things that Merwood student ambassadors have done uh, was start up the IEEE Extreme 24 uh, hour programming competition. Uh, Prasad Mohan, who's this year's uh, mentoring co chair and is also this year's program chair for the uh, uh, IEEE Extreme program was one of the people who started up the program. Joseph Ballin, who was uh, uh, chairing the fall Merwin Review Committee, was one of the founders of MADC, the Mobile Application Development Contest. Uh, a lot of the uh, current uh, award winners were active in the IEEE starting up the IEEE Compute, an all India newsletter about IEEE activities. We're also active in starting new student chapters and other IEEE activities. And one of the reasons why I'm giving this so much emphasis is that one of the ways to get Merwood Awards in the future is to get involved in these activities now, play some role in them, and these are credits that you can use uh, and mention when you submit your Merwin application and your role in these and what you've done with them can uh, be important in getting a higher rating for your IEEE. Uh, IEEE Computer Society India Symposium was started by former Merwin awardees and generated a few uh, new scholars, people participating in it. I think there were five volunteers from it who became Merwood scholars in the current round. Similarly, there were a number of uh, awardees for the, uh, a number of people who were active in starting up the IEEE Compute uh, newsletter became uh, awardees in the current round. And this is why there are, one of the reasons why there are so many awardees from India in the spring program and another program, the All Corella IEEE Computer Society Student Congress was recently started as part of this. Our second award is uh, co-sponsored by the Upsilon Pi Epsilon, sometimes called UPE Society. The uh, UPE is the uh, International Honor Society for Computing and Information uh, the, the information discipline, it was first organized at Texas A&M in 1967 and now has over 270 chapters across the world. Uh, the mission of UPE is to recognize academic excellence at both undergraduate and graduate levels, and it is a member of the Association of College Honor Societies. There are four awards uh, for uh, 
that are issued as upsilon pi epsilon awards through the IEEE Computer Society. There are a number of another four awards that are issued through ACM that you can apply for separately through them. They're open to both undergraduate and graduate students, but three years of transcripts are required. I believe it's a minimum of, a, I think, about a 3.0 grade average uh, to qualify at all. You have to be a member of the IEEE Computer Society. Criteria are about 40% academic achievement, 30% computer-related activities. They don't necessarily have to be Computer Society or IEEE. And there are three letters of recommendation are required. They could be from anyone. They should really uh, be someone who really knows you. It could be your academic advisor uh, or someone who's really familiar with your professional activities and your the papers and projects you've worked on. They should show, uh, among them, they should show involvement in computing activities and strong academics and provide a strong personal reference not just regurgitating your resume. The deadline for this award, as well as the Larson Award, is October 31st. Uh, you can see more information about the UPA Award at www.computer.org web students UPA. Uh, when you get the award, you get recognition on computer.org website and a press release. You get the monetary award. You also get a periodical subscription. Our third award is the Lat Stafford Larson Best Paper Award. It was endowed by a grant from the Larson family, family in 1983 to memorialize Lance Larson. Matt Stafford Larson, who died in an electrical accident while he was an undergraduate at the University of Maryland. And, uh, he was a son of Robert Larson, who was uh, former president of the, I, of the IEEE, not just the Computer Society, but the whole I, IEEE, and a uh, very prominent person in control systems. Uh, Dr. Robert Larson received his Bachelor of Science degree from MIT in 1960 and a Master and Doctorate degrees from Stanford University in 1961 and 1964, respectively, both in electrical engineering. And his thesis was on dynamic programming, and his innovation was to apply uh, dynamic programming to control to digital con uh, control systems, which where he was one of the main founders of the field. He worked for IBM Hughes Aircraft and SRI International for, I think, four years each before he co-founded uh, Systems Control, uh, which he led for about 15 years prior to its sale for British Petroleum. And he developed it from, I, I think it was three additional employees who I guess were just enough to give a uh, PowerPoint presentation to uh, when he sold it to British Petroleum. There were 500 employees and over 100 PhDs. Uh, after he sold it, he spent a year uh, as IEEE Computer Society president where he was really interested in expanding the IEEE, not IEEE, IEEE Society president, where he was very interested in expanding the IEEE internationally to over 36. He visited over 36, country, 36 countries and gave over 200 lectures as IEEE president and uh, was really innovative in introducing the IEEE to China. Uh, after his year as IEEE president, he uh, started up a venture capital firm Woodside Venture Capital, where he's, which he's still leading today, which uh, funds uh, companies in uh, uh, digital technology and control systems. And, uh, but, and basically, and anyway, to do, uh, the award is awarded as we are giving two awards this year. Previously, we were only giving an award to undergraduates. Uh, this year, we're allowing 
uh, you'd have co-authors on the paper, opening it up to all IEEE student members and recognizing uh, runners-up as well as uh, recipients of the award. There are going to be two awards of $500 each. There will be a certificate of commendation for runners-up. We're also, it used to be a writing instrument. We're thinking this year of giving a memory key with some software on it, but we're still working out the details of that. You could have multiple authors, and the prize will be divided among the student authors. All IEEE student members are eligible to compete. Uh, deadline is October 30, for, for this year is October 31st, and more details are at www.computer.org web students to learn something. Need to provide a PDF file of your paper, a description of why it's worthy of the award, a description of where it was presented or published, and uh, in case of multiple authors, a description of who contributed what. Paper needs to have been published or presented within the last year. Uh, the award program is. Uh, Really, uh, the efforts of a lot of people, uh, there are about 15 different people on the Burwood Committee. Uh, Edward Addy led the Spring Review Committee and organized that. Joseph Ballin is leading the Fall Review Committee, and they're the ones who really choose the winners. Nancho Apliel leads the Upsilon Pi Epsilon Evaluation Committee. Marco Domenico Santa Brogio leads the Larson Award Committee, Student Award Committee that Prasad Mohan and Shadu N uh, lead, and we get staff support from Eric Berkowitz and Kerry Cosby. So basically, we have uh, three student awards. We also have awards for best chapter and things like that, but that's a uh, separate uh, subject of a se separate, separate webinar to find out about that. Uh, and uh, find out more about this on the uh, different the websites for the different awards. If you have questions after this seminar, you should email membership at computer.org. And at this point, I guess I'm going to open it to questions. Um, Peter, let me start with one of the questions that we had from Zarati Itrak. Um, could you please go back to Slide number eight. Um, he was unable to get that, get the information from that one. One more, two more back. No. It should be with the recommendation letters. was this one. What, rec letters of recommendation? Yes. There it is. Okay. You need to have one recommendation from your IEEE Computer Society uh, faculty advisor, or student branch faculty advisor, and you can have a second, rec optionally have a second letter rec of recommendation for someone else who knows you. Sometimes people have sent letters of recommendation from a IEEE section leader or a professional society chair or other people who've been involved with your professional activities. Occasionally, we've got a letter of recommendation from an academic advisor, but the important letter of recommendation should come from your chapter or student branch advisor and should reflect on your participation in IEEE activities. And the three things it should show is uh, what you've done or you know, abilities overall, including, and also something about you as a person. It shows that he really knows you and is not just repeating your resume. Does that help? Yeah, that was very good. Um, the next question we have is from Juala Kata. Um, and they say, this is regarding the fact that I fit in the eligibility criteria of all three scholarships. So is there any restriction that I need to apply for only one of them? 
You could apply for all three, but the committees coordinate. So if you get a UPE or a Merwood Award, you won't get the other one. So you'll only get one award within a two within a year and a half period. So once you get a UP award, you're ineligible for Merwood for a year and a half. And similarly, if you get a Merwood Award, you're ineligible for the UPE for a year and a half. Thank you. And Kylie Kowanowski says, um, are there any scholarships that will be discussed today open to high school seniors? So will any of these be uh, open to any high school seniors? Uh, no, they're not. There was an award. We c I could try to get back to you offline about a scholarship available for high, sc high school seniors, but it's not related to any of these awards. Okay, we'll make certain we email back on that then. Um, there is a question here um, from Drew Fumtuala. I, I apologize if I butchered that name. Uh, is it compulsory that the letter of recommendation should be from a branch chair? Can it be from any other uh, person of IEEE? It can be. It's preferably from the student advisor uh, to the branch or the computer society chapter. But if someone else really knows you very well, you can either substitute that or have that as an extra letter. But it should um, be able to Vinamra, oh, sorry. Vinamra Banara says, I'm in my fifth year. I'm enrolled in a fifth in a five year integrated um, B tech plus MS degree. Am I eligible for any scholarship? Yes, you're eligible for all three. I think I think the main requirement is because you need I think three years of transcripts, it kind of rules out freshmen and sophomores. But if you're there, especially if you're in a combined undergraduate and graduate program, you're perfectly okay. You should be eligible for all of them. Good. Um, Yash Shahani says, can you please show the slide on preparing the UPE award again? You need the three years of academic uh, transcripts, which means it's mostly going to be seniors and graduate students who get it. And you could have three letters of recommendation that could be from anyone, but they should know you well and really reflect on your both participation in professional activities and your academic achievement for projects that you've had. Or anything Very else? Good. Um, sorry. Uh, Charu Preeti says, in the second award, uh, I believe that was the UPE, um, it says we can get references from any three people. Can it be of anyone, or it has to be somebody from IEEE? It could be anyone. But they okay. should be, they should know about your ability, your technical achievements, and also participation in computer-related activities, but they don't necessarily have to be IEEE people. Okay. But more, uh, might give a little more credibility to the IEEE people, but uh, if, they, if the other people know you better, that might outweigh that. Very good. Al Hassan Haruna Umar says, I will be starting my PhD in January 2018. How will I benefit scholarships as a postgraduate student? Well, you get the awards just as a, as a, as a graduate student. Uh, many of the award winners are graduate students. For the UPE award, you get $1,000. For the uh, Irwin award, at a, uh, you, know, you become a student ambassador for the year and get a $1,000 award plus mentoring. And for the Larson Award, you get the award. So you get it. <clears throat> it's normal for graduate students to get these awards. Plus, there are good credentials to apply for other awards and jobs. OK. Um, Ahnaf Rashik Hassan says, uh, thank you for the presentation. 
Is the IEEE Lance Stafford Larson now open for graduate students? I thought it was only for undergrads last year. Last year it was uh, only for undergraduates. This year we're going to have two awards, one for undergraduates and one for graduates. So that's new okay. this year. Um, and Aditya Sahu says, um, how can we publish papers? Um, you can publish them <coughs> anywhere at conferences or in journals. Okay. Um, S.I. Sajeshwar, pardon for my pr pronunciation, says, can you tell me more detail on Larson? Um, and also, the third point on the slide titled, Putting Together Your Best Paper Submission. Okay, basically, you need a copy of the paper, you need a description of why you think it's worthy of the award, and uh, where it was presented or published. And uh, if there are multiple authors, you have to explain who did what. Uh, this year is the first year we're allowing multiple authors, so we need to be able to distinguish who are the student authors, and uh, also you really only want to give it if the student authors were the primary contributor to the work. To the work, we relaxed it a little bit this year because many students, when they publish papers, including either their whole team or their faculty advisor as a co-author, as a convention these days, and we decided we didn't want to exclude those people, make it a little bit easier for people to submit, for people to submit. Okay, and Qho Yi asks, can a new member of IEEE or non-member of IEEE apply for any of the scholarships? You have to become a member when you apply. So you can become as a new member and join at the same time. Uh, currently, we're only making the uh, only IEEE's members or computer society members are eligible for the award, generally IEEE student members. You also have to be a computer society member for the UPE. Okay. Um, Altaf Muhammad uh, says, can the, mem the Merwin Scholarship be applied by second year undergraduate students? Yes, you can apply for it. Uh, Usually, I think they're mostly awarded to third and fourth year students, but if you've been really active in participating in student activities and have really outstanding grades, uh, you might be eligible. Okay. Um, Adanma Cecilia Eberendu says, how long can one be a member to qualify for the Merwin Scholarship? Is that how long do they have to be a member? Uh, let me go back to it. Um, how long can one be a member? So I'm guessing this means uh, the lower level. So what is they the least? They can join one? at the same time they apply for the award. Yeah. Okay. Um, Al Hassan. Haruna Umar says, uh, what if a student branch is not existing in my country, uh, e.g. Nigeria? What does he do in that situation? You could become a student member anyway, and uh, you would just use uh, an IEEE contact or your student advisor as the, your, uh, to write your re letter of recommendation, and you might also mention that there is no student branch in your, in your country. You could also use as your, for your letter of recommendation, you could use the leaders of the local IEEE professional, uh, professional chapter uh, that covers your area. Um, your Aditya, rep. sorry. Uh, Aditya Sahu is uh, clarifying the question given earlier, how can I publish my papers and on what platform? I think you've covered that. Am I right? Uh, yeah, we're pretty flexible. You could publish it anywhere if it's uh, 
we're a credible organization that carries more weight, but it's also the quality of the paper. Uh, the committee will judge, will, will try to judge the quality of the paper, but because we're allowing a papers in a wide range of different subjects, especially if it's outside of the expertise of the members of the committee, uh, being published in a more prestigious place may carry some weight. Okay. Um, Valdir Ventura Fio asks, what are the main activities to do as an ambassador? Is there any Congress to participate as an ambassador or something like that? You can use your imagination. Uh, I think the more innovative you are, the better. Uh, but you can check with what other things are being done in your region uh, or area. One of the things that the mentors will do is help guide you on, on, on good things to participate in. Uh, one of the things you can do as a, as a vision statement, you can write down the things you'd like to do, and the ambassador mentorship committee will help guide you of how you can get involved with that and try to put you in contact with people who can help you with that. Okay. Uh, Sipand Hormoz Diari says, um, I just started my graduate degree. Am I eligible to apply? Yes. Okay. Um, Ruben, sorry, go ahead. Uh, for the UPE at Burwood, you'll have to include your undergraduate transcripts. Very good. Uh, Ruben Glatt says, I have all the requirements and a strong background. The IEEE student chapter here is very young, so I don't have any activities yet. Would that disqualify me? Uh, you would, it would be hard. To, you, you would not get very many points for your IEEE participation uh, in evaluating you for the Merwin Award. It wouldn't disqualify you, but it would make it harder. Uh, you could point to other things that you've done, especially computer-related activities and uh, involvement in things outside of your immediate area. You might have be uh, you know, better success with the UPE Award in that case. Very good. Um, Mega Ben asks, can an, a Merwin scholar reapply for the Merwin or UPE after 13 months? I think it's after uh, a year and a half, which is 18 months. Uh, yes, they can apply, uh, reapply. Uh, usually when they do that, it's usually they've been a Merwin awardee as an undergraduate and then reapply as a graduate student. But uh, if things are very close, I think we might give preference to all other things being equal, we might give preference to the new person, especially if it's two uh, Merwin Awards. But after 18 months, you can apply for UPE after being a Merwin Scholar. Okay. Um, Valdir asks also, um, the student scholarship, is it, is it $1,000 per year? Well, it's just one thousand. You only get a one-year scholarship of a of a thousand dollars. You're talking about the Merwood scholarship. That's what I believe they were talking about. It wasn't yeah, written I, on there. It's it's a one thousand dollars scholarship for one year, but it's really only a one-year award. Um, Sai Thajeshwar asks, uh, Sir, can you tell me more in detail on the Larson Award? What specifically would you like to know more about? Yeah, can you clarify that question, please? Um, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, Ahnaf Rashik Hassan says, if the paper is published in a high-impact journal, does it maximize one's chance of winning the IEEE Lance Stafford Larson? How does the committee evaluate the paper? I think the committee is trying to evaluate the paper on technical content on, and presentation quality and uh, uh, general organization. Uh, 
I think they're basically trying to evaluate the quality of the paper rather than the quality of the journal that it's published in. However, <coughs> being published in a high prestige journal is an indication that it's a higher quality paper and that it's already gone through a review process. So the committee will weigh that in their evaluation, especially if it's in a field that they're less familiar with. Um, okay, this is the last question. We've uh, gone we've gone over 10 minutes or 11 minutes. Uh, we wanted to get, there are a lot of questions here. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you, for, for putting your questions in. But this will be the last one. We uh, will leave this open uh, for a little while longer so that you can ask questions, and they will be logged, and uh, we'll get back to you via email. Um, but you can also send your questions later to the membership uh, at computer.org. So here's the last question. Yash Shahani says, uh, do the letters of recommendations from professors have to be on the college letterhead? I, 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 I'm not sure if it's an absolute requirement, but it, it kind of verifies that they're legitimate letters of recommendation. Uh, I think that the, the critical thing is we have to really be convinced it's really from the Professor, we're, not, we're less concerned about the letterhead than verifying that it's actually a legitimate letter of reference. Okay, very good. Um, thank you, Peter, for a great presentation and a wonderful discussion on the IEEE Computer Society Scholarships and Awards for Students. Peter shared many great insights on applying for the scholarship and awards. Um, that should help all of you as you prepare your applications. Now, again, it looks like we're still getting some questions coming in. It's just a reminder that your email is logged with your question, and we will get back to you with an answer. Our next two webinars will be on the, the road to becoming an IEEE Fellow and Skillsoft, which is our online learning platform that was recently improved in April of this year. The dates for the two webinars have not yet been finalized. One will be in October and the other in November. Look for emails, social media posts, and updates to the webpage regarding dates, times, speakers, and registration information. Once again, I'd like to thank Peter and everyone for attending today's webinar, and we hope to see you all at our webinars in the future. Thanks again, and have a good day.